A young woman named Louise applied bright makeup in front of the mirror. She is raising her son Adam alone. Since Louise is going to a bar tonight, she asks her friend Laura to look after Adam. Louise tried on many dresses before finally being satisfied. Louise rarely goes out, so she took her image as responsibly as possible. However, Louise's mood soon soured because her friend Sophie couldn't come due to urgent matters. After having a little wine, Louise was about to leave the bar when she accidentally spilled a drink on a handsome guy. Surprisingly the guy didn't even swear back at her. As an apology, Louise ordered him a drink. This unexpected encounter made Louise stay longer at the bar. A conversation sparked between her and the stranger. The guy mentioned he recently moved to this area. Judging by his accent he's from Scotland. They talked for hours, and when it was time to part ways, both felt they didn't want to. Suddenly David kissed Louise but then abruptly stopped and left. Louise didn't understand what had just happened. The next morning Louise went to work. The secretary Sue told her they have a new boss. Louise was surprised to see David, who was here with his wife. Louise tried to avoid him, unsure how to navigate this situation. After work, she shared this with Sophie who laughed for a long time. Of course if Louise had known David was married, she wouldn't have engaged with him at the bar. Turns out he lied to her. Later after making sure Adam was asleep, Louise went to bed herself. She had nightmares about the past. Someone very close to Louise voluntarily left her life. Louise woke up in tears. In the morning, Adele brought tea to her husband David. They live in a luxurious country house. David is a talented psychiatrist and works a lot. Adele is upset that the husband doesn't talk to her much. She takes a lot of sedatives. Wishing David a good day, Adele saw him off and stayed home alone. Meanwhile, Louise took her son to school and went to work. Obviously she couldn't avoid the new boss forever, so she intended to act as if nothing had happened. However during lunch, Louise got sauce from her sandwich on her blouse. Going to the restroom, she tried to quickly tidy herself up. Meanwhile, Adele feels boredom and loneliness. The stain on Louise's blouse was quite noticeable, despite all her efforts. In the boss's office, she noticed a photograph of him with his wife. Dr. David Ferguson entered and was very surprised to see the girl from the bar. The fact that she turned out to be his secretary three days a week was an incredible coincidence. Nervously smiling, Louise suggested forgetting about everything that happened in the bar and just working together. David felt awful. He was married and shouldn't have flirted with Louise. She assured him that everything was fine, they were just both drunk. David and Louise shook hands. It seemed like everything ended well. Later, Louise told her new boss that she lives nearby and usually walks to work. David revealed that as a psychiatrist, he specializes in addictions. Louise in turn shared that she is divorced and raising her seven-year-old son Adam. In the evening, there was a dinner at the Ferguson's house, attended by all of David's new psychiatrist colleagues. Adele found it difficult to adjust to life in London, but for her husband's sake, she was willing to take this step. When the guests left, David told his wife that he wouldn't be able to do this again and it should be the last time. She promised it would be. Adele longs for village life. She used to enjoy walking in the forest, listening to music. More than 10 years ago, the girl was treated at a psychiatric clinic after losing her parents in a fire. Here she met a nice, straightforward guy named Rob, who suffered from sleepwalking and addiction. Thinking about this now, Adele experiences strange feelings. David returned his wife's mobile phone and credit card, believing she was ready for it. On the other hand, David worries because of his new job he will often be away from home. Adele promised she would be okay. In the afternoon, Louise asked David if he was satisfied with how she was working. David replied that he felt he was in good hands. When David casually asked Louise about her plans for the weekend, she became embarrassed and replied that her son would spend those days with his father, so she would have the opportunity to spend time for herself. The conversation was awkward. David didn't even know why he asked about plans for the evening. At that moment, he didn't seem like a professional psychotherapist at all. At home, Louise leisurely did some cleaning, bought groceries, had lunch, and in the evening ordered pizza. Louise was bored, so she just watched TV and drank wine. David was still on her mind. After washing her face, Louise went to bed. Nightmares from the past haunted her again. It was connected with the pills and someone Louise cherished deeply. Louise heard her son calling for help. But no matter how fast she ran after him, she couldn't catch up. Waking up on the balcony, Louise panicked heavily. Was she really sleepwalking? Terrifying memories made Louise burst into tears. On Sunday, her ex-husband Ian brought Adam. Ian told Louise that his new girlfriend Lizzie is pregnant, and they plan to go to France for the summer and take Adam with them. However, Louise was strongly against it. Ian didn't expect such a reaction, thinking she would be pleased to have some free time. But Louise remained adamant. Adam got angry because he wanted to go to France with his father and screamed at his mother that he hated her. Later, Louise complained to Sophie about her ex-husband. Sophie thinks it's wrong that Louise forbids the son to live with his father. 
This would allow Louise to sort out her life and understand what she wants. Her friend's words made Louise think. When the mother allowed Adam to go, the boy was happy. He regretted saying bad things to his mother yesterday. In the morning on Monday as usual, Adele saw her husband off to work, and Louise took her son to school. When Adam asked the mother what she would do in his absence during the summer, Louise replied that she would do whatever she wanted. In reality, the prospect of parting with her son for several months horrified Louise. She was so lost in thought that she didn't notice Adele on her way and bumped into her. Adele was glad to meet the husband's colleague and kindly offered her to have coffee together. Louise was a bit taken aback but agreed. At the cafe, Adele started questioning Louise about what David is like as a boss. Louise responded with cliched phrases. Adele shared that she has almost never worked in her life. She dreams of becoming a mother, but it hasn't happened yet. Noticing a wound on Louise's hand, Adele asked where it's from. Louise replied that she sleepwalks. Adele liked that her new acquaintance was so sincere. David often calls his wife to make sure she's okay. Adele told her husband that she went to the cafe for coffee and lied that she was alone. Louise was surprised that Adele had such an old phone. She evasively replied that it gets the job done. Before parting ways, the girls exchanged numbers. Adele also asked Louise not to tell David about their meeting because he doesn't like mixing work and personal life. Just a few steps away from the cafe, Louise received a message from Adele. Full of enthusiasm, Adele decided to repaint the wall in the bedroom. She constantly secretly throws her pills in the sink, thinking she doesn't need it. Adele often reminisces about the past when she and Rob grew close. Robert was in love with Adele, but he didn't stand a chance because Adele loves David, who calls her regularly. David asked Adele on the phone if he should be worried about this guy. Adele replied that they're just friends. In the present, David calls his wife every few hours. Adele is tired of this control. She also expressed the thought that perhaps David is trying in vain to help addicted people. Some of them don't even want to get better. This conversation was very unpleasant for both of them. Adele felt angry, diving back into the past. Now she lacks unity with nature, and she partly wants to compensate for it, so she paints a forest landscape on the wall. Going down to the basement, Adele found old photos and a diary belonging to Robert. In the past, they often had frank conversations. Adele wore David's wristwatch, who was studying at university at the time. Despite being very different, Adele loved David deeply. It was bitter for Rob to hear that. Despite his unconventional orientation, he fell in love with Adele. In the present, returning home and seeing the forest landscape on the wall, David was in a stupor. It reminded him of the deep well in that forest. After dropping her son off at school, Louise received messages from Adele again, who suggested going to the gym together tomorrow. Louise has no idea how to get rid of her boss's wife. At work, Sue warned Louise that David doesn't seem to be in a good mood today. And indeed he was irritable and even rude to Louise. For some reason, this prompted Louise to accept Adele's offer to spend time together. Adele was happy. Every day David sees patients with addictions and tries to help them. By the end of the workday he had softened, and Louise couldn't help but notice. That night she had nightmares again. The past wouldn't let her go. In the morning when David was leaving for work, the wife called out to him, but he didn't turn around. Today was Adam's last day at school before the holidays. During the day, Adele went to Louise's place and walked around her entire apartment, scrutinizing every room. The girls went to the gym together. Louise hadn't exercised in a long time, so she quickly got tired. Unlike her, Adele regularly goes to the gym. Later, the girls relaxed at the spa and chatted. Adele shared that she married David 10 years ago when she was 18. On the night her parents perished in a fire, he saved her but suffered serious burns himself. Hearing this, Louise was shocked, but Adele assured that she's okay now. When Adele suggested having lunch at her place, Louise saw no reason to refuse. Their home was truly luxurious. David constantly calls his wife on the home phone to make sure she's already home. Louise wonders about this level of control. Adele replied that it's not what it looks like from the outside. Over lunch, they discuss nightmares. Adele believes that she and Louise are similar, so she gave her Rob's diary, which was supposed to help her get rid of the nightmares. According to Adele, not everyone remembers their dreams. But if it happens, the subconscious is trying to tell us something. Louise shared that after her mother's demise, she was lost and even went to a clairvoyant out of desperation. She hoped that if she heard from someone that the mother is no longer suffering, it would bring her relief. At home, Adam packed his things, looking forward to summer in France. Soon Ian came for the son. Louise hugged Adam, saying how much she'll miss him. They've never been apart for so long before. All evening Louise thought about her son. He's all she has. Later after pouring a glass of wine, Louise began to read the diary she received from Adele. Of course Louise doesn't know who Robert Dominic Howell is. The diary contained advice on how to manage one's dreams. Rob also suffered from nightmares, and therapy didn't help him. But for Adele's sake, 
Rob was willing to try. This girl was unlike any other. Louise was interrupted by a knock on the door. She was not expecting to see David on the doorstep, who decided to check on her because she took a sick day. Of course Louise wasn't actually ill, she just wanted to spend time with her son. David was understanding. Louise offered him to come in and hastily hid the diary. David confessed that he was here because he felt bad about his rudeness earlier today. Plus, he didn't want to go home. When David told Louise that he constantly thinks about her, she asked him to leave. However by the front door, passion got the better of them. When it was all over, Louise felt guilty. She promised that it wouldn't affect work, and David thanked her. He came home late. Adele pretended to be asleep. David couldn't know what she was really thinking. Louise went to work not knowing how to act. In the morning without saying goodbye to his wife, David also went to work. Louise was already waiting for him in the office. At their meeting, awkwardness immediately arose between them. Obviously pretending that nothing had happened would be difficult for them. Sue noticed that Louise was pensive. She only said that she hadn't fully recovered yet. Adele called her husband and asked why he returned home so late yesterday and where he had been. David didn't answer the question, saying it was time for him to go. Adele knew he wasn't telling her something. At work, David was nervous, while his wife remembered the past and cried. To distract herself, Adele texted Louise and suggested having lunch together tomorrow. Louise has no idea how to behave with David's wife now. Adele remembers when Rob told her about his troubled family. Rob's childhood was far from happy. Unable to resist, David came back to Louise and asked for permission to enter. He confessed to Louise that he constantly thinks about her and feels lonely in his marriage. Louise knows the pain of infidelity because some time ago her ex-husband had an affair with a colleague. Truth be told, he had several affairs before his relationship with Lizzie. After the divorce, Louise was broken but managed to find the strength to move on. She doesn't want anyone to experience the same pain, so she asks David to leave. Adele feels like she has no strength for anything. Nevertheless, she prepared dinner for her husband. Returning from work, David coldly said he wasn't hungry. David is angry with his wife because he feels she's not trying hard enough, and it all starts over again. David has no desire to move again. To distract herself, Adele went for a run, and then texted Louise again. She continues to ignore her messages, not knowing what to reply. When David was talking on the phone with his wife, Louise eavesdropped on their conversation from another phone. It's obvious that he wants to control every move of Adele's, and he doesn't like it when she deviates from her schedule. Louise found herself in a difficult position but still decided to meet Adele, who talked about the problems in her marriage. Lately, she and David have been growing apart. Louise is the only one Adele can talk to openly. Louise asked who Rob is, to whom the diary belongs. Adele replied that he's an old friend of hers. Before going to bed, Louise continued reading Rob's diary, who suffered from nightmares and tried to recover from addiction. He blamed his family for turning his life into a nightmare, quite literally. Every night, Rob saw a door in his dream, but he always woke up before opening it. And then the moment came when he didn't wake up and enter the door, behind which turned out to be his ideal life. Louise would also like to find her door. David gave his wife new medication. Adele didn't want to take it, but David wasn't interested in her opinion on the matter. Adele had to give in. However when the husband left, she spat out the pills. At the end of the workday, Louise brought David documents to sign and was about to go home, but the sudden appearance of one of David's patients, Anthony Hawkins, scared her. The guy persistently demanded a meeting with Dr. Ferguson and behaved extremely nervously. David was ready to listen to Anthony, but not in the office but outside. Louise saw and heard Anthony shouting that no one and nothing would help him. Later, David asked Louise to schedule Anthony for an appointment with him tomorrow out of turn. The guy is going through a tough period. When the patient left and there was no one else in the office, David suggested to Louise to have a drink. She readily agreed. Both feel an unbearable mutual attraction, but they can't be together. David said he's not a bad person, just unhappy. Louise supported him, and passion arose between them again. In the evening meeting Sophie at the bar, Louise told her everything as it was. On the one hand Louise wants to be with David, but on the other hand she values Adele. The point is, both David and Adele are happier with Louise than with each other. Sophie advised her friend to end these relationships as soon as possible because sooner or later it will end badly for her. But despite Sophie's advice, Louise continued dating David and being friends with Adele. For the first time in her life, she wants to think about herself, not the feelings of others. Once, when Louise asked David about his burns, he told her that many years ago he saved some girl from a fire. Louise knew for sure it was Adele. That night, Louise dreamed she was in a smoke-filled corridor. Her son, Adele and David were calling for help, but she was powerless to do anything. Louise woke up screaming and in tears. It seems she was sleepwalking again. That same morning, Adele received mail. It made her delve into the past again. Rob always tried to cheer her up. 
Finding out that Adele is going to marry David, the guy was upset. However, Adele is confident in David. She wears his watch because he can't do to his burns. In the present, David can't reach his wife. She deliberately ignored his calls and wandered into a disadvantaged neighborhood, where she encountered a mob of hooligans. Of course Adele didn't tell her husband the truth, lying that she got a bruise when opening a cupboard. Supposedly dizziness is a side effect of the new pills. Obviously David didn't believe her story. Because of the missed call, he went home in the middle of the workday but now must return. Following the advice from the diary, Louise is still trying to cope with the nightmares. This time in her dream, she also saw a door. Stepping inside, Louise found herself in her ideal world, at her mom's house where there's no place for anxieties and fears. Louise has always dreamed of a quiet family life. For the first time in a long while, she felt calm and didn't wake up in fear. David returned home late. Adele was not asleep, sipping wine. When Adele told her husband she's worried he drinks too much, David laughed. He was really tired of taking care of his wife and couldn't take it anymore. Adele reminded her husband of their shared secret. He can never leave her. Louise found herself again in her beautiful dream, where it was just her, Adam and David. In her fantasies they were one happy family. Lately, Louise has been waking up with a smile on her face, something that never happened before. And during the day she felt much better. David continues to insist that his wife take medication. Alone, Adele cried remembering how Rob told her that the days here, in the psychiatric hospital were the happiest in his life. In ordinary life, a girl like Adele would never have talked to someone like him. In the present, Adele did not expect to see Anthony at her doorstep, who urgently wanted to see Dr. Ferguson. Anthony was clearly confused when he saw a bruise on Adele. The guy thought David did it, but Adele assured that she didn't need any help. Louise was also to say the least surprised. Adele suggested skipping the gym today and going for a run in the park. Later, Louise shared with Adele that for the first time in a long time, she forgot about her nightmares. It turns out that controlling dreams is not so difficult. Adele is very happy for her friend. Louise is grateful to Adele, who changed her life. At work, Sue told Louise that Anthony Hawkins' parents had come, clearly worried about something. The head doctor Mr. Sharma listened to them. The patient's parents learned from their son that he saw his treating doctor's wife with a bruise on her face and believed that the clinic management should know about it. It is Dr. Sharma's professional duty to investigate. However David objected, saying that it was his private life. Dr. Sharma decided to call Adele to make sure of everything. Louise eavesdropped on the conversation from another phone. Adele assured that nothing bad happened, she just accidentally hit herself in the kitchen, and Anthony misunderstood. At home, David asked his wife why she didn't tell him about Anthony Hawkins' visit. Adele replied that she just didn't want to cause problems for the patient. David didn't want to stay and went to Louise, immediately opening a bottle of wine. Louise's home is the only place where he can be himself. Louise directly asked David if he had harmed his wife. Everyone in the office is just gossiping about it. David assured that he's not capable of such a thing. Louise doesn't believe David, and he in turn doesn't believe his wife, who claims she hit herself in the kitchen. Louise asked David to go home to Adele and sort out his life. Obviously their affair is ruining his marriage. At night, Louise again saw her beautiful dream. Seeing David she said he didn't belong here. Suddenly Louise noticed another door, but before entering it, she woke up. Louise continued reading Rob's diary, where he wrote about how much he loved Adele, so he didn't want to check out of the clinic. He didn't believe that David had accidentally been near her parents' house the night of the fire. Could it be that he had deliberately set the fire? Adele is sinking deeper into herself. She would like to be in the forest again and enter her door, disappearing forever. In the office, David asked Louise not to leave him because she's the only good thing in his life. With each passing day, he falls more in love with her. Adele finds it increasingly difficult to control her emotions. Louise is not ready to be with David until he sorts out his own life. Intensive workouts at the gym help Adele distract herself. After another training session, she approached the administrator and asked to arrange a premium membership for her friend. On the street, she met Anthony who can no longer attend therapy with Dr. Ferguson after the incident. Anthony also handed Adele a package with banned substances. She's tired of fighting her addiction. David is unable to help either Anthony or her. About 10 years ago after being discharged from the hospital, Rob visited Adele. She showed the friend her luxurious house, inherited from her parents. Rob had never seen such luxury before. Part of the house was burnt after the fire. That night, Adele's parents didn't even wake up. Everything happened very quickly. Despite treatment, Rob continues to abuse substances, and Adele joins him. Rob wonders what it's like to be as rich and beautiful as Adele. He would give up a lot for such a life. In the present, the phone rang in the Ferguson's house. David answered. It was the gym administrator, who wanted to confirm Louise Bartley's membership at Adele Ferguson's request. Upon hearing this, 
David felt like the ground had been pulled from under him and demanded that his wife give him her mobile phone. That's how David found out that Adele had been friends with Louise for a long time. Not knowing how to react, he left. Adele smiled, continuing to prepare dinner. Louise was having dinner when she heard a knock on the door. David was furious, not understanding why Louise had not initially told him about her friendship with Adele. Louise said it happened accidentally. Adele is very lonely, so Louise just felt sorry for her. Now Louise hates herself for how she treated Adele, who did nothing wrong. Also Louise knows that Adele is afraid of her husband, who handles all her money. David couldn't believe Louise thought so poorly of him and fired her. For Louise it was an absolute shock, but David was adamant. When he left, she burst into tears. The next morning, she went to the clinic and submitted a resignation statement to Dr. Sharma, supposedly due to family circumstances. Dr. Sharma didn't want to lose such a valuable employee and said she could return in a month if her problems were resolved. Unable to bear it, Louise cried and left. Sue helped her pack things. When asked what happened, Louise remained silent. She wanted to talk to Adele, but there was no response to the doorbell. Looking through the window, Louise saw Adele sitting motionless on a chair. Louise had to break the glass door to unlock it and enter. Adele was unconscious but alive. Louise tried to wake her friend up, and at one point she opened her eyes and asked Louise in bewilderment what she was doing here. Adele was not thinking clearly and could hardly walk on her own. Louise made coffee and talked about her dismissal. She was tired of lies and wanted to confess to Adele about her affair with David, but Adele lost consciousness again for a few seconds. Learning how many sedatives David gives his wife horrified Louise. Adele said she doesn't always take the medication, but sometimes David stands over her, leaving her no choice. It wasn't always like this. The situation escalated a few months ago when Adele found out about the husband's affair. After that, they moved, hoping to start a new life in this house. Louise asked the friend why she didn't divorce David. Adele replied that he controls all her money and as a psychiatrist, he could easily make her look crazy, taking everything for himself. At that moment, Adele remembered walking with Rob in the forest near her parents' house. In childhood, she was always afraid of the deep well where you couldn't see the bottom. Adele always thought monsters lived inside. Rob wanted to help Adele overcome her fears. She replied that his presence already helps her. After that, they left holding hands. In the evening David came home. He fired Louise, supposedly because he didn't like the fact that she was friends with the boss's wife. It seemed unprofessional. Adele lied that she never knew who Louise was. David can't let go of the past. He and Adele share a sinister secret that they've kept all these years. Adele said they need to move on. If they continue living in the past, it will ruin their lives. David would like that, but he's not sure he has the strength. In the next scene, we see Rob's body at the bottom of the well. Life seems to go on. Louise dreamed of spending time happily with her son. Every morning, David went to work while Louise counted the days until Adam's return. Secretly from the psychiatrist husband, Adele returned to substance abuse. She went to great lengths to hide the evidence. Finally Adam came home. Louise was very happy. The son brought her a cute souvenir from France. Ian noted that the ex-wife looked good and gave her wine. Ian is truly grateful to Louise for allowing him to spend the entire summer with their son. Ian and Lizzie are doing well, and Louise is sincerely happy for them. To make up for lost time, Louise spent a lot of time with Adam. He's the only meaning in her life. Sometimes Louise misses Ian. She doesn't hold any grudges against him. Later Sophie visited them, having not seen the friend for a long time. Louise told her that David fired her upon learning about her friendship with Adele. Sophie initially knew it would happen. Anyway, Louise breaking up with David is for the best. However despite everything, Louise continues to communicate with Adele because she has no one else. Sophie is sure that David being a psychiatrist, will eventually suspect something. Louise didn't want to listen to the friend's lectures anymore and asked her to leave. Louise still had the keys to the office. Asking Laura to look after Adam tonight, she secretly went to the office and stole a folder from David's drawer containing a bunch of personal notes. The next day, Louise brought the folder to Adele. There were documents mentioning that some time ago, upon learning about her husband's affair, Adele threatened his mistress Marianne. Fortunately Marianne didn't press charges. Adele said at that time she just lost control. She also confessed that everything that's happening is connected to Rob. Louise didn't understand what that meant, so Adele showed her the forest painted on the bedroom wall. Adele grew up in those places. But after Rob visited them, David and Adele never went back there. The house has been empty for all these 10 years. Adele believes that David took Rob's life out of jealousy. Adele only wanted them to be friends because they were the two most important people to her. One day Rob just disappeared. David said Rob decided to leave, but Adele knows for sure he wouldn't leave without saying goodbye. Maybe Rob is still in that forest. In the evening after putting her son to bed, Louise continued reading Rob's diary, where he wrote about hating city life. 
This made him return to his destructive habit. The point is that doctors can't help patients who don't want to heal. Rob lived with his older sister and her boyfriend, who led an immoral lifestyle. The only thing keeping Rob from hitting rock bottom was the upcoming meeting with Adele. Running away from home, Rob went to the friend's mansion by bus. He believes Adele is his savior. Falling asleep while reading, Louise found herself in her wonderful dream again and saw that same white door. Behind it was Adam's room, the atmosphere was unsettling. The next moment, Louise woke up and went to make sure Adam was okay. The glass of water on his bedside table was overturned just like in her dream. Unable to sleep, Louise returned to reading the diary and noticed the last pages were torn out. Googling Robert Dominic Howell, Louise found no information about him but found his sister's contacts, who owns a souvenir shop. The doorbell interrupted Louise. It was David, who asked her to return the office key. He knows it was Louise who stole that folder. Louise returned the key but denied having the folder. David said there are surveillance cameras near the office, and if he shows the footage to anyone, Louise may have problems with future employment. This threat didn't scare Louise, but she didn't hide that she gave the folder to Adele. David advised her not to meddle in his marriage anymore, or it would end badly for her. In the evening Adele, wearing a beautiful dress, prepared dinner for her husband. He said there was no need to play the Stepford wife. David understands that Adele initially knew Louise was his colleague and about their affair. David intends to file for divorce because nothing could be worse than such a relationship. Calmly eating dinner, Adele said in that case, there would be no turning back for him. When David left, Adele spat out her food, remembering how she and Rob prepared to fall asleep simultaneously and experienced the technique of entering the astral world. Leaving their physical bodies, their astral shells flew around the entire house and then the forest before returning. Having experienced this out-of-body experience together, Rob and Adele were extremely excited. The next morning, Rob read on the internet that the astral shell can travel throughout the universe. Adele had done it before, including on the night of the fire. Perhaps if she had been in her body that night, she would have been able to smell the smoke. With practice, Adele learned to leave her physical body for longer periods of time and fly further away. This allowed her to be wherever she wanted. Of course Adele didn't tell David about this because he's too down-to-earth a person. Finally David arrived. Adele couldn't wait to introduce him to Rob. Seeing the handsome David for the first time, Rob realized he didn't stand a chance. Rob couldn't take his eyes off him, they shook hands. In the present, David abuses alcohol to forget for a little while what a nightmare his life has become. Adele often stands outside the door of his personal room. Louise called Elsa Howell's souvenir shop and pretending to be a journalist writing an article about Westland's clinic, asked about Rob. Elsa said the treatment at the clinic was useless. Within the first two days after discharge, Rob returned to his old habits, stole money from her purse and disappeared. Since then, no one has heard from him in the last 10 years. This reinforced Louise's suspicions that David may have harmed Rob. Louise continued her investigations and found an article online about a fire at a wealthy family's home in Scotland. The old article stated that David Ferguson, a young farmer, saved the wealthy heiress. But could the savior have been the criminal who started the fire to marry Adele and get all her money? There was a time when David was a suspect in this case, but he was ultimately not arrested due to lack of evidence. That same evening, Louise wrote a letter to the inspector who investigated the case over 10 years ago. Rob deserves justice. As Louise read her son a bedtime story, she didn't notice herself slipping into sleep and seeing that same door again. Louise's astral shell first traveled around her apartment, then flew into Laura's apartment, where she was watching TV at the time. Upon hearing Adam's voice pleading for his mother to wake up, Louise returned to her body. Adam was very scared and crying, not understanding why his mother hadn't woken up for so long. Louise was equally scared, although she tried not to show it. After that, she went to Laura's under the pretext of getting coffee. In fact, Louise wanted to look around Laura's apartment to make sure it wasn't a dream. Had she really had an out-of-body experience? It seemed incredible. Louise tried to make sense of what had happened and realized that last time she couldn't wake Adele up for the same reason. Could Adele have been watching her and David when they were together? At that moment, Louise realized that her meeting with Adele wasn't accidental. In fact, Adele wasn't who she pretended to be. Louise is trying to understand what's going on. It turns out that all this time Adele has been manipulating her, but for what purpose? Louise went to Brighton to meet Mary Ann, David's former mistress, and went to her cafe. Mary Ann, who was obviously older than David didn't want to talk, but when Louise said she had traveled a long way she did agree. David was a regular at her cafe. Once Mary Ann noticed he looked unhappy, and they struck up a conversation. They often chatted but were not lovers. One day Adele appeared at Mary Ann's door and told her never to talk to David again or give him any advice. Mary Ann wondered how Adele could know the details of all their conversations. Despite this, Mary Ann continued to communicate with David, who constantly complained about how unhappy he was in his marriage. 
One evening Marianne returned home after work and saw an offensive message on her bedroom wall. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. Adele was standing at the doorstep again, not even trying to hide that she had broken into the house. After this, Marianne wanted to go to court, but David talked her out of it. It seemed he wasn't surprised by his wife's behavior. Louise thanked Marianne for her honesty. Marianne in turn advised her to stay as far away from David and Adele as possible. Meanwhile, Adele remembered how she, Rob and David cooked dinner together. It seems the guys got along well. Rob looked only at David. When Adele went for wine, David told Rob that he was initially worried about his friendship with Adele, but now he sees that Rob is just a good friend to her. Overall, the company had a good time. At dinner, Rob felt superfluous when he saw Adele and David together. But soon Adele went to bed, and Rob told David that he also initially worried. But now Rob understands that David wants to marry Adele not for money but because he sincerely loves her. Rob envies both David and Adele. But the question is, who does he envy more? As the lovers indulged in passion upstairs, Rob leaving his physical body, spied on them. Returning to London by bus, Louise called David's office and pretended to be Marianne to make an appointment with him through his secretary. Seeing Louise at the meeting place, David realized that she had talked to Marianne. Louise said she knows the truth about Adele. She's a psychopath and befriended her only to turn her against David. Right now Louise just wants to know what happened to Rob 10 years ago. David remembers rushing to Adele's mansion. She was in tears. David was gone for only one day, and a lot happened during that time. Adele told him that Rob had offered her substances, and she hadn't refused. If David had known about Rob's addiction from the start, he would never have left Adele alone with him. Yesterday according to Adele, Rob overdosed and didn't wake up. Instead of calling the police, Adele panicked and threw him into the well. David's watch accidentally fell too. David was horrified and ran to the well, looking inside. But the well was too deep, nothing could be seen. David believes they should immediately report this to the police, but Adele persuaded him not to. She's afraid the police will think she's crazy and send her back to the psychiatric hospital. In the end David gave in. He thought he could learn to live with it, but couldn't. Louise really wants to help her beloved, but David has no intention of getting her involved. The fact that Louise, misled, has written a letter to the inspector, complicates everything. And it's further complicated by the fact that Adele somehow may know things she shouldn't. Now David is going back to Scotland to finally tell the truth. Picking up her son from school, Louise told him that he would stay overnight with his father today, as she had urgent matters to attend to. Ian was happy to spend extra time with his son. Louise thanked her ex-husband and asked him to say hello to Lizzie. Being at home, Louise realized that Adele might be watching her right now. Suddenly she received a phone call from Adele, making her realize that she was indeed watching her. Adele's astral body can only travel to places she has been before. Everything needs to be imagined in every detail. Louise stated that in her attempt to do the right thing, she had written to the inspector. She believed Adele's lie and wanted to protect her from the husband. Perhaps the police won't believe her, but they will surely believe David. Realizing she might lose David forever, Adele screamed in desperation, insulting Louise. Adele remembered the day when David was planning to leave until the following Saturday. Rob watched them from the window. When David left, Adele and Rob agreed to try out-of-body experiences together again. Rob often talked about how perfect David was and how he wished for a life like Adele's. Currently Adele was going to write a farewell letter, confessing that her husband was not guilty of anything and that it was she who dropped lifeless Rob into the well. Adele is ready to release David from her captivity. But Adele also knows that she cannot live without him, so she chooses oblivion. Meanwhile, Louise received messages from Adele, who wrote that she was going to fix everything and that David would be happy without her. Realizing what Adele was about to do, Louise panicked and tried to call her but she didn't answer. Adele set fire to her house while Louise was on way to her in a taxi and calling for an ambulance. Adele took substances. When Louise arrived, she knocked on the door and called out to her. The house was already filled with smoke. Louise's worst nightmare became a reality. Breaking the glass in the door, she as before tried to unlock it, but Adele had anticipated everything. Louise had no choice but to leave her physical body and get close to Adele. But she didn't know that at the same time, Adele's spirit flew out of the house to inhabit the body of her former friend. Thus they swapped bodies. Adele's cunning plan worked. Meanwhile, Louise and Adele's body woke up on the bed completely disoriented. Adel managed to break into the house and entered the bedroom. Louise couldn't move. Adel said that no one would take David away from her. The last word that escaped Louise's lips was the name of her son. When Louise passed away, Adel carried her out of the burning house. At that moment the ambulance arrived, and Adel began to simulate hysteria. Later, she went to Louise's apartment. Adel still had to get used to her new appearance and the fact that she now had a son. The next day, Adel visited Louise's ex-husband to pick up Adam. The boy seemed to sense immediately that something was wrong with his mom. 
Adel tried to play her role well. After David told the truth to the police, he felt free and was happy to reunite with his beloved. But neither David nor Louise ever knew that 10 years ago, when Adel and Rob had an out-of-body experience together last time, they had switched bodies. Rob did it to deprive Adel of her life in his own body and to get David, as well as her money. Soon David married Louise, having no idea that all this time, Rob was right next to him. It's an obsessive, insane love that knows no bounds. Now Rob is happy, as is David who is confident that everything will work out. But Adam looks sad. Now they are all going to spend the honeymoon together. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.